Okay, so you've got an original iPad and you want to use it, but there's a problem. It won't turn on. You've tried letting it sit overnight charging and with higher wattage bricks, but it still won't charge. This iPad has a completely flat battery inside. Now, unfortunately, that means we will need to open it up to charge it, but it means we won't need to purchase anything else to be able to get this iPad to work nicely again. Let's get started. So, to begin, the original iPad uses a series of clips around the edges to hold the display in place. Now we're going to need to unclip those, that way we can access the inside of the iPad and recharge the battery. Now, to get to those, it can be a bit messy if you're not super careful. You should start on the right side of the iPad and work your way until you unclip all the clips. Uh, then there are going to be a few other clips here. These ones are uh, metal compared to the plastic ones here, and these ones are the ones that are designed to come out first. So I'll get started by inserting a metal pry tool. Now you do have to be careful. Unfortunately, this will likely damage the frame of your original iPad. I have tried this before on a few other original iPads and it has worked quite well. And now it's time to work your way around the other corner of the iPad. And do be careful not to pinch yourself because it is a bit tight in there. I recommend grabbing another tool and using it to keep the iPad open while you work around the other edges. There are four clips along the bottom edge of the iPad that you need to be aware of two on each side of the 30 pin connector, and you do need to be careful because there is also a Wi-Fi antenna tucked away in there. What is likely to happen with these clips is they will snap, so be prepared for that. They are replaceable, so you can go out and purchase some more, but if you find you've only broken a few, you can position the remaining ones in places that will hold the display in place the best. And you don't want to pry too hard or too deep in there. All right, now that we've got that out, yeah, you can see a few of them, little tabs. They'll just pop out. There is one more up at the top. Now that's out. Unfortunately, I don't think many of these are salvageable. And around the top right edge, there's an antenna connected to the cellular board, if you have a cellular model. If you don't have a cellular model, you won't need to worry about that. I should probably mention, this is the same procedure for fixing the battery on the original iPad with Wi-Fi and the one with cellular. I'll just unplug that. one for the display. And then you have four connectors, technically. One is split into two. So there are three cables. Two for the digitizer, one for the display. And once you've got all those out, you're able to remove the display panel and get to work on the inside. Now I do recommend you tip the iPad forward and knock out all the bits. Once you remove all the remaining clips from the inside of the iPad, it's on to the logic board, cellular board, and 30 pin connector. All we'll need to do is remove those from the iPad so we can have full access to the batteries. So there are four screws connecting the logic board to the iPad. 
and the two holding the 30 pin cable to the logic board are the same length and the two outer ones are the same length so that just makes it a bit easier to manage. Finally there's one holding the cellular communications board. They're a bit snug. And now there is a piece of tape Oh yes, I should mention, if you're working on a Wi-Fi model, the differences you'll notice is you won't see a cellular communications board and you won't see a SIM card board. Uh, you also won't have to deal with this connector here. Now there is a bit of adhesive holding the communications board in place under it fairly strong. Do you recommend being careful because there are some cables nearby. But once that's done, you can remove the cellular board from the case and just put that over there. Next up, we've got to disconnect 30 pin connector and we've got the headphone jack and microphone cable at the top. And then we've got another cellular connector up at the top. That just slides out of its connector. And finally, we've got the SIM card tray board, which has a piece of tape over it. I do recommend you go at this with a set of tweezers as it makes it a bit easier to remove the tape. Now the tape is wrapped around the back of the logic board so you don't need to completely remove it, just kind of remove it enough so that you can remove the connector from the logic board. Now that connector is unplugged and all the other connectors are unplugged, we are able to remove the logic board after we unplug the power button, volume button, and mute switch cable. Now everything can be removed. And we have access, oh, and the speaker cable down here. Next thing you're gonna wanna do, take some electrical tape. And cover the battery terminals. That way the 30 pin connector doesn't make any sort of contact and short anything out while we're charging it. Next step is exposing the battery. Now, I recommend you avoid using metal tools near them, because uh, you're going to need to expose it. Now the battery starts here, but you don't want to short anything out if your battery has any charge. I know for a fact this battery has no charge, uh, so I'm just gonna, there's a little gap right about here on the battery, on the cover for the battery. And I'm just gonna poke my pry tool into the opening and keeping it above the battery, make it tear. Once I have the tear, I can make it bigger with my finger. And we only really need to make two fairly small tears in this cover. Whenever you're working with batteries, be very careful not to poke them. All right, so that's one terminal. We're going to need that very soon. I'll expose the second terminal, which will be a bit more difficult. Optionally, you can remove the 30 pin connector. Uh, it's just a bit easier this way. You don't have to deal with antennas under the 30 pin connector and such. Now that we've exposed both battery terminals, um, it's important to be very careful now, especially if you may have a bit of charge left in your batteries. The next step is pretty simple and it involves finding an old USB cable. You'll need to sacrifice it, that way it can fix your iPad. This one was a mini USB cable, and we all know how useful those are. So naturally I chose it. All you have to do is strip the wire, 
find the positive and the negative leads of the USB cable. And then you're going to connect the positive lead of your USB cable to the right side of your battery using a bit of electrical tape. All you need to do is just make sure you have good contact with the terminal. And then you're going to apply the electrical tape on top, nice and tight. And then you're going to attach the negative terminal to the left side of the battery. Now you'll want to be very careful to ensure that only the uh, battery contact is touching the exposed lead of your USB cable. Now that you've finished attaching the positive lead to the positive terminal on the battery and the negative lead to the negative battery terminal, you will need a 5 watt USB wall adapter. You're just going to plug that in and connect it to an outlet. Once you've finished connecting everything, I recommend you leave it sitting for about three hours. That will give the iPad enough time to charge up and then we can test the voltage. If you don't have a multimeter, it's not really necessary to check, but I just like double checking with a multimeter. That way I'm absolutely certain the battery has enough charge to begin charging on its own before I reassemble the iPad completely. Anyway, we'll check back in about three hours and see how it's coming along. See you then. And we're back. I'm just about to check the voltage of this iPad's battery before I connect everything up and start charging from the 30 pin connector. All I need to do is remove the insulating tape from the battery terminals. Just got my multimeter here. I'm gonna set it to the most sensitive setting for this and then I'll be able to check them and see if it's all set to be reassembled. And we've got 0 0.06, so that's not the most charge. It's not the least charge. I think it's all set to be reassembled. So I'll get to that right now. All right, with the iPad completely reassembled, it's time to connect it to power. Now I've got a 12 watt wall adapter connected to an extension lead and I'm just about to plug into the iPad. If everything's gone properly, we should see a low battery symbol than the Apple logo or even just the Apple logo. So I'm just about to plug it in right now. And we've got the Apple logo. If this manages to get past the Apple logo to the lock screen without boot looping, that means we've successfully recharged the battery and the iPad is all set to use. Now it's recommended that you recharge the battery entirely without using the iPad before you uh, just unplug it and use it. So uh, let's just see how everything works. There we go. 88% charged, and that's just from uh, the uh, direct connection with the battery terminals. Let's see if the uh, display works, and it does. So we have got a perfectly functioning iPad, as far as I can tell right now, without spending any money. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.